question where does the wine color come from actually the real question is from what is composed the wine color wine's color is determined by the presence of coloring substances mainly present in the skins of the grape berries coloring substances uh, present in wine belong to the families of Flavones and Antociani, respectively uh, responsible for the color of white wines and uh, red wines. As for their colors, wines are therefore distinguished in three categories, white wines, red wines and rosé wines. When it comes about the white wine, usually, uh, of course, they are produced uh, starting from white grape varieties, from white buried um, grapes. But, uh, however, it is also possible to produce white wines starting from red grapes variety. How? It's very simple. Actually, the color, of course, depends uh, from the contact between skin and juice. We have, in the case of a red grape variety, the antocyanins that are coming from the skins and they're um, penetrating into the juice, creating the actual red-black uh, color. Um, and when, of course, you don't have this kind of exchange, you're going to produce anyway a white wine, even from a red grape variety. When it comes about rosé wines, things are even more interesting. Actually, you can produce uh, rosé wine starting uh, by uh, using a very simple technique you can have a very limited contact between skin and juice, um, of course, when it comes about a red grape variety, and you will have a very tiny little percentage of antocyanins that will penetrate into the juice, creating the classical, typical kind of rosé color um, that we all love. And uh, of course, uh, many people, they generally tend to think that rosé wines are produced uh, by the blend of white wine and red wines. This is, of course, done, but in general, it's not allowed for the majority of wine, still rosé, that are produced under the nomination of origin. And um, it's actually uh, allowed when it comes about sparkling wine, but again, the most common approach is a short contact between skin and juice for red grapes uh, variety. Red grapes variety, of course, are um, generally speaking, uh, kept in contact uh, uh, the skin and the juice uh, for let's say anywhere in between from two hours up to 12 hours, but it's also depending on the climate. Of course, warmer climate are going to give you way more darker uh, kind of uh, um, uh, result in terms of color and colder climate are going to give you a much more fine and light and elegant kind of coloration for your wine. Let's talk about now the red wine. So how can I produce a red wine? Well, we already said that we need to keep in contact skin and juice for a very long, long time. The contact should be constant and the contact between skin and juice is usually um, kept for the entire fermentation process. So um, let's say fermentation process goes from 10 up to 14 days uh, uh, and uh, for all this fermentation process you need to have a contact between skin and juice in order to create this kind of exchange of antocyanins. You know, antocyanins are going to penetrate into the juice creating that kind of very strong dark red kind of color and uh, of course in, in some cases for some kind of uh, wine uh, for some kind of reserva also maybe you want to do extra more contact in order to create that kind of intense color another practice that you can uh, you know do um, in order to create much more big and powerful and dark color is um, the pumping over. Uh, generally speaking, the less pumping over you do, the uh, of course lighter will result the wine. The more pumping over you, you will do, the darker will be the wine. But what is exactly a pumping over? So for all the people that don't really know what it is a pumping over. Uh, it's very simple. Basically, it means to uh, pump the juice from the bottom of the uh, tank, where is the uh, mouse is fermenting, to the top. Uh, basically, at a certain point, we will see a visible separation, we will we'll observe a separation of the two masses. The liquid mass, so the juice, will stay at the bottom part of the barrel and the solid mass will go on the top of the uh, tank. So at that point we need to pump the juice from the bottom part to the top to make skin go down again. Well, the more you will do this practice, the darker uh, will be your wine, the much more muscular, much, much more uh, 
the much more muscular and much more dark and uh, powerful will be uh, your uh, color. So let's try now to understand a little bit better what kind of nuances we can find in the different wines. Let's start with the straw yellow. Typical uh, of uh, young uh, white wines, uh, the straw yellow can eventually get a little bit greenish or a little bit goldenish, uh, like golden nuances, at the two extreme of the scale. Greenish for crisp and easy to drink white wines, goldenish for uh, wines that are having a little bit more structure and that maybe uh, have seen also a little bit of uh, wood, a little bit of uh, barrique. Golden yellow, typical of full-bodied wines, such as uh, raisins wines and late harvest wines, or wines um, which have been aged uh, for a pretty long, long time. So again, uh, in uh, wood, but for a little bit more, uh, uh, more time, a little bit longer time. The more intense coloration uh, with uh, golden tone can also be of varietal origin uh, that is characteristic of grapes having skins uh, that have uh, more pigmentation inside. Amber yellow, uh, typical of wines which are definitely uh, concentrated, uh, pasito uh, or uh, fortified wines uh, or uh, which have undergone on an oxidation uh, aging. Uh, Marsala, Sherry, Madeira. So let's try now to analyze the nuances in rosé wines. Uh, pale pink, which is typical of rosé wines, characterized by a very short maceration in skin. So a very short, short contact between skin and juice. This is really typical in Provence. Uh, pale rosé are the uh, you know um, most common kind of rosé that you can find uh, in uh, Provence in the southern France. So. If you are a fan of those kind of uh, wines, uh, I really recommend you to try that kind of uh, that kind of uh, um, idea of uh, of. Uh, um, we have also the cherry pink, which is typical of the majority of rosé wines. A very elegant color and sparkling wines. Uh, it has uh, often, uh, you know, this kind of like chromatism uh, of onion skin, which is really, really, really um, interesting, uh, which uh, um, it's called uh, Pelure d'Oignon. Uh, it's really, 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 really super, super interesting uh, to, to see. And, and then when it comes about the rosé uh, nuances, we have also the pink uh, claret. Despite its name, it's the darkest and much more intense nuance of rosé wine. In ancient time, pale red wines and rosé of medium uh, color intensity were defined with this name, with the same name, claret, which is still used in France to um, define uh, still uh, rosé wines. So let's talk about now the uh, color nuances when it comes about red wines. We have a uh, purplish red, uh, typical wine that are very young, red wines that are really, really uh, young. Uh, and um, what we say in Italian, di pronta bevuta, very ready to be drunk immediately, almost. Then we have a ruby red coloration, which is uh, very uh, common. It's very typical in red wines, uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, you know a color um, that uh, you know you can find in wines that are of medium structure and medium aging process. Then we have granite color, uh, and this is a color that is assumed by concentrated red wines uh, that also went through a longer aging process uh, uh, and uh, also in the uh, in wood uh, probably. Uh, we have also uh, a color that we define as orange red. This is an index of a sure uh, and mature evolution state of the wine uh, when of course it's present in just just, you know, um, like a tiny little percentage, this kind of color, just like a reflex. When you have a very evident kind of orange coloration, it could uh, be a sign of, uh, you know, uh, oxidation, very important oxidation or some kind of other, um, you know, alteration of the, of the wine. So we are at the end of our little journey in the world of the colors. Uh, of the uh, different wines. So we learned about the different nuances, we learned about the different uh, type of wine and the different type of coloration that we can find. I hope you enjoy. If you like those kind of content, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, we're a little bit everywhere, trying to be on every possible social media. So 
please follow also our social uh, pages. So I uh, hope again you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Cheers. Thank you.